Welcome. Thanks for tuning in. This is um, a longer video of me working on a Pan Pastel couple dancing, number two in a series of uh, this couple up behind me. So we're going to start with the palette first. And uh, I picked out ochres for my yellow base this time. And we've got the neutral greys, which will be a foundation, uh, magentas, uh, ultramarines. Um, quite often there's blue in a face. And uh, the permanent red. So all of these I've got as... Um, oh, and the iron oxide tint. That's a beautiful peachy colour. Burnt sienas, of course, and uh, I think that's that's uh, thalo green. So all the different colours that uh, I see as I'm looking at the, the reference photo, and I've picked out a tint, um, the pure colour, which is sort of the the base, and uh, a shade. Sometimes it's the extra dark shade. Sometimes it's just a dark shade. And uh, I probably wouldn't need to do this first underpainting uh, with the the greys if I had picked a, in this case I'm using pastel matte paper. Um, if I had a grey a toned paper, I probably wouldn't need to put the this layer of grey down. I just use the, let the colour of the paper come through. Um, but as I was using up uh, paper from a pad, I think there were 12 sheets to the pad, and uh, so you just use what you've got at hand. And therefore I'm putting down this, this underpainting of uh, greys, which you won't really notice um, later on. I'll keep adding grey to my painting as I go through it, but at least it, it gives me the the idea, the map of uh, what's to come, where the lights are going to be, where the darks are going to be, and uh, you just, everyone needs a map to start off with. The, um, and then once I've, I've got the, the base down, I'll do a little bit of detail um, in this case, it will only need to be the the eye and the lips. I just don't have enough fine uh, control over the uh, applicators to... Or enough confidence, I think it is. I don't know if it's control. I think it's confidence to do those uh, details without using uh, pencils. And uh, my pencils are good old Carbothalos. Um, fantastic um, pastel pencils, very economical. Um, I bought a set of 72, as you do when you're starting off doing um, pastels. You tend to buy big sets, thinking you're going to need every single colour, which in fact you don't. Um, you don't know until you, you get them. And so my Derwent's I've often looked at the sets of buying Derwent's, um, but they're pretty pricey, and um, I find they they break quite easily when you're sharpening them. But I do love the the Derwent's; quite a different feel and uh, colours from the, the Carbothalos. You end up working out what sort of colours you're after and just buying individual pencils from different brands as you go along um, rather than sets. So just uh, blocking in the, the eye, trying to understand where the the contours of it are. I'll come back with the pan pastel and go over the top of um, these marks later. but. Just uh, trying to get some darks in there. Red and green always make uh, good shades. And a bit of light underneath well, where the light is hitting on her, her eyelid. 
And there's not a lot of um, people or, or videos that I've seen um, of people doing portraits with uh, the pan pastels. So I thought, wow, there's a niche that I can I can fill for those who'd like to use them for more than just um, backgrounds. So my background that I've I've done here is some um, I used up my ultramarines and, and neutral greys on one side and uh, some of the ultramarines pulled across and the iron oxide is there for the, the other side. And it'll become more apparent as I go through the, the picture why I've, I've picked this sort of blue and, and um, pink background. This, this time I, normally I put down a green layer over my, my greys but I thought no, from what I could see in the reference photo, um, red was just the natural choice to go down. And uh, I've been watching some, some videos on skin tone since I've done this particular painting. Uh, done with um, pastel pencils, these, these videos. And uh, they normally start with white and they're using yellow as their, their undertone for the, the skin rather than red. But this couple are, are dancing outside in the sunlight. And um, she just happened to be, in the reference photo, more red than yellow or white. So red it was. And um, I mean, my face is quite red at the moment because I uh, went round to friend's place for lunch the other day I was sitting outside yakking away for hours and um, I thought I was safe from the sun but hello I wasn't so I'm quite red too and when I'm doing a, a painting a pastel painting I, I know a lot of people love using the pastel pencils and getting it as realistic as possible but I fell in love with um, pastel paintings that were more expressionistic and uh, were done with the traditional pastel sticks and uh, I love that sort of vibrancy and, and the colours that, that come from uh, pastels and uh, as I've used the, the pan pastels, that's really what I've enjoyed from using them as well. The vibrancy, the uh, flexibility, how you can blend with them. And I'm not trying to achieve a, a realistic portrayal. There's already a lovely photo of, of the couple. I'm just trying to find some emotion uh, from from what I saw there and uh, the Pan Pastels is a very painterly way of, of um, getting the pigment down onto the onto the paper just watching myself do this and it's actually quite encouraging to um, have a sort of video record of what you've done to go, oh, okay, well, that bit was quite good, and whoops, I probably, you know, shouldn't have done that. But this is a, this channel is a journey as I try to become an artist. Um, I started, you know, the original painting I did, let's see, it'd be three years ago now. It was pretty terrible. And so I've come a long way um, just as a hobbyist, doing it in my spare time. And uh, no training apart from good old YouTube University. So it's quite nice to watch the progress. Uh, there's different things I'd do with this painting now, if I was to do it again. But watching it, um, I had decided to, to mainly use uh, the Pan Pastels. And uh, like with the ear, in the past I've, I've done ears with um, pastel pencil. But this time it was like, no, come on, you can do it. 
and these applicators are fantastic. Uh, they were designed by the inventors of Pan Pastel uh, as a way of applying that very fine pigment. And at the moment, I've I'm using a rectangular one, which is oops, you probably see a little black dot on the the blue background there. That's a little bit of sponge that that's come off the applicator. And um, they do sort of disintegrate after a while. But the rectangular one I particularly like for the different types of marks I can make with it and blend with it. Um, I've used the the different sponges. Some are some are set to sort of mimic fingers, and uh, I haven't really found that I, I haven't found my way around those ones yet to um, get satisfied with the, the, the marks I can make. But the rectangular one, I really like using the sides and the um, the front edge and the the very sharp little corners are great for blending as as I'm working on the the eye there. I was uh, quite impressed as I came back and put some layers there. The ochres that I'm using, very happy with the um, the shades I found in the the ochres. Lovely skin tone uh, came out. And uh, her face is still quite red at the moment, um, but that'll get adjusted as I go. And for this particular reference photo, um, I'm very conscious of the fact that her hair, uh, when that gets um, done, is going to be covering uh, her face as well. So I wasn't too worried about um, the tone, tonal values of of the colour I had on her face because the hair it would kind of be like a shadow anyway so it was okay I'm just trying to keep in mind what's going to come later oh, and there was that nose I was a bit disappointed at that stage I was like actually I think I actually had it right the first time and um, I, the tempting thing there's a terrible temptation that comes with with pastel is to keep reworking um, what you've done but the paper can only take so much and Pam Pastel eventually um, starts sliding into this sort of slush where it just you've just put too much down and it, it says you know what you should have stopped um, I haven't quite reached that stage with saturating the the pastel mat at this stage, but uh, I, I was I was starting to think about it and go, hmm, we're gonna have to be we're gonna have to be careful here. But as you keep looking at your reference photo and you're going, oh, actually, you know, that's not quite right. I need to adjust that, and. Um, which is why it's so important to have a light touch when painting with pan pastels. Um, obviously it would help if you knew what you're doing rather than what I'm doing is feeling my way intuitively around the, the picture. And that's why I'm not giving you instruction on this is the way you should do it. I'm just demonstrating this is how pan pastels can be applied and they're a wonderful uh, medium. Um, I don't think they get the attention that they they deserve. Um, uh, maybe in the future there'll be more who, who decide to use them uh, for in their painting. I particularly like them because if there's no mess, right? So some people want to use pastels, but they don't like the dust. They don't want to touch the pastel sticks. They don't want to get pastel on their skin. Some ask about wearing gloves because uh, pigments 
um, you, you don't want to get too much of that under your skin. But you don't see me using my finger to do any blending here. Um, there's no dust on my hands. It's all in the applicator. That's a, that's a pretty good thing. There's no paint smells. I don't have dust all over the, the, the paper. It's a very clean medium. And if you're using uh, pastel pencils, uh, that, you know, you're not getting dust from them unless you're doing super heavy applications. So that's her face basically done, and I, I debated with myself whether to um, include this part of the the painting. Um, so for the next couple of minutes, I'm I'm just sped up doing his hair, and I decided to to leave it in um, because really it's the demonstration of of the whole uh, painting, and there's a little bit of um, his scalp showing through, which was the, the Pam Pastel. And I'm trying to, with with his hair, which is, he's very grey, I'm just using um, my blues to, to represent uh, the grey. And at this stage I haven't, I haven't really experimented too hard with using um, Pam Pastel uh, for here. I've done a couple of of uh, paintings where I have just used Pam Pastel for here, but I've kind of got into this rhythm of using pastel pencils for um, doing here, and, and I haven't um, got the courage yet to let go of the training wheels, if you like. You know, take the training wheels off the bike and uh, try different things. Um, that'll come, no doubt, uh, in this coming year for um, the different artworks that I do. But at, at this stage, we start with the, the dark um, blues, and um, the Derwents are particularly good for, for darks. And then I'll I'll come back with some some lighter ones for the the highlights on top. And I'm thinking, you remember I, I spoke earlier about using this um, this um, the light iron oxide sort of. I'm kind of reluctant. I'm not that great on on knowing exactly the the correct way of saying the colours, but we'll say it's a peachy color perhaps on on top it's peachy seem right and we've got the blue gray on on the other side well the blue gray is now coming through we've got a bit of peach in his is here for a scalp and the blue gray is going to come through from the the background so that's the the trick of the eye and ideally her skin tones are going to mimic um, the other side of the background this was definitely important to include for her here um, to to show how that's going to drop across the Pam Pastel. And of course Pastel Matte is uh, such a, a nice grippy paper. And it's great for doing uh, here. And um, you, you can drag across the, the Pam Pastel quite nicely. It's already... Um, it, it doesn't sort of smudge or, or blend away. You, you can get those lines on top and this is why having the darkness you know the, the sort of more deeper red tones on her face um, come through with uh, as underneath the, the hair and oh, while well, she's got uh, brown hair I'm just looking for all the different other colors I can see that the I guess are being bounced by the light in the reference photo. I'm still quite happy to throw blues in. And um, you just kind of, well, for me, I'm just, I'm building up. I'm trying to find the, where the uh, 
the direction of where the hair's going and then get some illusion of, of volume um, between the, the lights and the darks. And every now and then I'll, I'll bring in a different pencil to try. <laughs> Grey one. I uh, wasn't sure if that was going to be the right thing. And you... Sometimes when you bring in the browns, you go, oh, well, it's brown here. And so in your mind, you go, well, I should use a brown color. That doesn't always work either. Um, in pastel, often how the paintings work is lots of little marks of uh, complementary uh, colors. Um, you know, even contrasting colors close to each other lots of, of little marks of those together is what's going to build up the, the picture and that's I just saw myself use a, a Koenor, um pastel pencil I've become quite fond of those I although I just said you shouldn't buy a set um, I can really feel a strong urge to buy a set of um, Koenors. I think that's a French grey that I'm using of the Derwent and that is a fantastic colour to if you're looking for a to add to your collection of pan pastels I definitely recommend um, the French grey there's different indigos yep, so she had quite a lot of flyaway hair coming across her face and um, to me it feels you know while there's quite a bit of detail in a hair um, when your when your eye starts looking at the overall um, picture I'm always still attracted to look at her eyes the shadows um, I can see you know, a bit of emotion coming through in, in the painting. Uh, her earrings. They both had uh, earrings. And uh, just trying to find the light. Make them look a little bit gold. And often I'll take a colour that I've used somewhere else in the painting and make sure it gets spread around. Uh, rather than just have a spot of colour um, in one area on a painting. The eye seems to prefer... Or a painting, I don't know if it's the eye prefers, but a painting looks um, more complete if those colours are spread around in different places rather than just one spot. Like her chin... I never got that quite right, the way the, the I used the magenta there and probably a tint of ochre just to the side. And I decided to leave it as it was, but um, I wasn't that happy with with it. But as far as the painting goes, it's it's okay. So now that I managed to get her highlights done and her hair, then it was time to just come back and and fix up the highlights and and his hair. And um, sometimes it, it's hard to know when to stop getting the highlights in, um, but they do add to the illusion of of layers. Um, yeah, a bit of yellow. Yellow always seems to always seems to work. Touch of turquoise. But always blue, and I don't mind the the blue look um, for what I was trying to achieve in this particular artwork. Uh, with the colours, that works uh, really nice. A lot of people don't like the um, blues of Carbothellos because um, apparently they're not very light fast. But this isn't a museum piece. 
this is a learning piece and uh, there I go just getting a little bit of uh, pan pastel so uh, let's be brave get some ochre in there and uh, see if that that works I'm not trying to get a look of individual strands um, in the hair I was actually quite happy with how that sort of turned out. I can just tell myself now, if I was talking to myself, I'd be like, well, I am talking to myself. But if I was talking to myself as I was painting that, I'd be like, you know what? Leave that here alone. Come on. Stop. You're going you're gonna to overwork it. But you got to, I guess, trust yourself as, as you're doing it to um okay oh well you're the person in the field at the time you can't you yeah, do second guess i'd second guess myself all the time while i'm painting you go oh should i do that and you go i'll just leave it and you can always come back to it later and and uh change it if you have to uh that's a pit pencil Faber Castell um, pits, sort of an ivory colour, and uh, I haven't. I bought a set of pit um, pastels. Haven't really used them that much because I got used to the Carbothellos. And again, once once I find I get used to something, it's um, there's a false sense of security that comes from uh, what you're used to. Yeah, I've got a feeling that I, I'd left that eyebrow a bit late. Didn't really matter. I didn't need to, to fuss about it. It's quite happy with that little dash of ochre under her, her eye, just on the top of the cheek. Uh, that worked for me, and I'm looking at her nose now going, you know, that's, the nose was fine. Didn't need to worry about it. So, uh, yep, all those, the, the longer you look at a reference work, the more you will see in it. And uh, there's that French grey, just for wispy bits. I'm just going to have a slug off my coffee. Okay, so we're, we're coming to near the end, and of course, Pam Pastels are used for the uh, clothes as well. So this was the neutral grey um, for his top, and we're going to use Ultramarine for uh, her top. And just trying to find the, the way the cloth is falling, and where the light and shaders. The thing with pan pastels and using the, the applicators is, um, I was going to say, it could, I guess in some ways it can be quite fast, in other ways it's quite slow. So I tend to go back and forth like on the face, I spent quite a lot of time working on that face. Um, there was a certain expression in her eyes I was trying to capture, and I, I feel like I got that thoughtfulness that she she's having in that moment and the way that he's he's holding her uh, that got captured so the, the goal of that uh, that particular painting was achieved it's number two in a set of six maybe um, paintings I did of this couple and uh, with the clothes, I'm just trying to uh, get a sense, you know, we're not going for the great detail here. It's, you know, they're wearing clothes. Here's where the light's coming from. And uh, that's all that was needed. 
and I use the same sort of technique across all the paintings for the hair and for the clothes. And the faces, um, the, the palette stayed the same. So um, I'll probably do some other videos on now that I've finished the series on how those those turned out. But really, this this whole video was just to show the versatility of pan pastels, and we'll have a look at the um, the final painting under different light um, on the easel. There you go. It came out um, okay. So thanks for sticking to the end. If you've watched the whole the whole lot, really appreciate um, you supporting the channel. Thanks so much.